Hot wax baths are of particular value in cases where there is a stiffness of joints or when wounds after healing have resulted in scarring or contracture. These baths are also extremely useful in arthritis cases and before starting work in the mornings for patients suffering from cold blue fingers as a result of vascular disturbance. Infrared rays are used in a wide variety of cases while for both local and general tonic treatment, particularly of those who suffer from debility, ultraviolet rays are of great value. The patient whom we saw a minute or two ago leaving hospital and reporting to the retraining shop is now out of plaster and wearing his own boot again. Very soon he'll be back again at his old job in the factory. Specially designed work in the retraining shop and exercises in the physiotherapy department have accomplished wonders. This patient severed the flexor tendon of his left thumb. He has to depress the spring-loaded plunger in order to position the next hole for tapping. The perspex splint fitted round the thumb is used to ensure that only the affected joint is used. Greater power can be developed by increasing the tension of the spring. The capstan lathe can be employed in cases of fracture of either arm. Here, for instance, is an elbow immobilized at right angles. Constant light action prevents muscles wasting and ensures a good blood supply to the injured part. By means of special grips, the drilling machine may be adapted to develop range of power to shoulder, elbow, wrist and finger joints. To encourage flexion of the fingers, this grip is used. The piece of metal behind the grip acts as a fulcrum and the sawbell pad it surrounds can be adjusted as flexion improves. The downward thrusting of the lever brings about the increased flexion required. The operator here is one of the men we saw earlier bending pipes. As he progressed, he required to get more movement of his thumb towards his little finger. This is provided by adjusting the position of the wooden block behind the thumb. Most of these devices are made by patients. The work is particularly helpful in neurosis cases because it gives them something different to do in a different environment and so takes their mind off things. This man is being told about his next appointment with a visiting orthopedic surgeon. He, like the rest of the patients, is seen regularly each week at a follow-through clinic held in the physiotherapy department. Once every week, the members of the rehabilitation team make their round of the retraining shop. Each man is visited while at work his progress is discussed among the entire team and his response to the treatment designed for him is assessed. Where necessary, the treatment is modified. In all, there are six members of the team. On the left are the two consulting surgeons, orthopedic and plastic, in consultation with the rehabilitation superintendent and the physiotherapist. On the right are the other two members, the company medical officer and the assistant superintendent. These weekly consultations are of the greatest value both to the doctor and to the engineer, for only by their pooling of the combined resources can the facilities of the retraining shop be utilized to the best advantage in speeding the patient's recovery. The piece of equipment we saw being made earlier is here being checked in action during one of these weekly rounds. In this instance, it is found to be satisfactory. If it had not been, alterations would be discussed during this visit and the necessary modifications put in hand. In certain cases, vocational training is carried out at the same time as physical rehabilitation. This man, for example, as a result of an accident sustained seven years ago, was left with a painful, crippled and useless hand. Through the art of the plastic surgeon, the hand was restored to almost full function, and all the time this treatment was going on, the man was being trained for a special assignment as an inspector. We see him here with the rehabilitation superintendent. And so to the end of the day, the end of the week, and to payday. Wages are standard except that new bonus is paid instead of production bonus. It is of the utmost importance that no patient should ever be allowed to worry over money. Normal work, normal pay, and normal hours, except that the retraining shop knocks off five minutes earlier so that the main exodus can be avoided. Economic and psychological factors are of the utmost importance in any rehabilitation scheme. Because the patient must never mope about at home in idleness, and his thoughts must be kept on recovery. Hugh Stelling, with his spine in plaster, 
Still froze and nifty dark, as the rehabilitation superintendent and the ambulance driver found out to their cost. while the cartilage patient, after fun and games in the retraining shop, gets back to serious business. Teamwork with the patient as an essential member of the team is the keynote of success. It is all very interesting, and none are more interesting.